Everybody here today has talked about value. Value is something that providers say they want when they don't want to talk about the price of the thing. <clears throat> so I'm here to say it should be cheaper, and that's part of what we have to talk about healthcare IT doing. I'm going to talk about three public policy issues that if, if IT is not mainly about IT, the promise of IT is not mainly about the public policy issues in IT, but the other enabling public policy issues. And while I do that, I want you to think about three companies. Amazon, Travelocity, Open Table. Everybody here knows all three of those companies, all right? So the first public policy issue is reimbursement. Louise Lang told you that in Hawaii Kaiser, primary care visits had dropped by 26%. For Kaiser, that's great. For most doctors, that's a disaster. That's a financial catastrophe. And as long as we pay people in healthcare to produce visits, we will continue to obstruct the diffusion and use of IT to do the things it ought to do, which is to stop silly things like visits when they shouldn't be happening. So unless we can, as we proceed on the IT policy front, proceed on the front of reimbursing someone, some entity, some organism, for the longitudinal care of a group of patients being responsible both for their clinical and financial status, the capacity of IT to unleash us from the paradigm of the visit, the tyranny of the physical interaction, will be obstructed. So reimbursement is the first thing we've got to work on. The second thing we've got to work on is comparative effectiveness. Now, we're going to hear from ARC. I've got to tell you, I'm a lapsed health services researcher. Let me tell you what the incentives are if you're an academic health services researcher. The incentives are for you to get as big a grant as possible for as long as possible to hire a dedicated staff that does nothing but your research project for which when your research project is over that staff disappears leaving absolutely no impact on the delivery system whatsoever. <laughs> that is what your incentive is if you're an academic health services researcher. I am not so naive as to believe that some portion of the comparative effectiveness money will not go down that chute. But please, God, we've got to develop some mechanism by which, as you heard, we develop a data system in real time that actually works off the same data system by which people care for people and pay for that care, as opposed to building standalone, dedicated, isolated research data streams which cannot be supported and cannot be afforded. So the key task, if IT is to bring its promise to bear in comparative effectiveness, is to break out of the paradigm of standalone, dedicated, research-only data streams to build the same kind of data streams for which every other business in America works. Linda Dillman, once from Walmart, once told me, we know more about a can of cornflakes, a box of cornflakes that we sold in some store outside of Portland we can tell you who bought it, we can tell you what else they bought, we can tell you what they're likely to buy next week. We know more about that than you know about a patient you've been seeing for 10 years. And it's true. <laughs> There's no data research project with nurses with clipboards running around. So comparative effectiveness is the public policy thing that's got to be gotten right if IT is to fulfill its promise. And the last thing that has to be gotten right is the maze of regulation that protects the incumbents in healthcare. Now, I asked you to think about Amazon, Travelocity, Open Table. Amazon is not Kramer Books with a computer. Travelocity is not your local travel agency with a broadband connection. These are service platforms that are enabled by IT but would not be possible without it. Do you understand what I'm saying? They are new things in the world. What I'm suggesting is that the real promise of IT is to create in healthcare new things in the world. Not simply to wire the incumbents to do what they do more quickly. 
Now that would be a good thing, don't get me wrong. I understand that's important, but if we limit RIT to the interests and perspectives and capabilities of the incumbents, that is to say if our definition of meaningful use or our demands for interoperability have to track the capabilities of the incumbents, then what we'll be doing is giving Kramer Books a computer. Now, I've been to Kramer Books. God love them. It's good for them to have computers. It's good for small, independent family docs to be wired. But the promise of IT is to bring us forms of service that we can't even imagine now. In the same way that healthcare has to be what, Susan? Cheaper, thank you. <laughs> in the same way that we now do for ourselves, in our banking life, in our news acquisition life, in our travel life, things that would have been unimaginable 15 years ago, enabled by IT, things that 15 years ago would have been foolhardy, dangerous, and for which travel agents and stockbrokers would have told us we were taking our lives or our portfolios in our very hands, we now do them without even thinking about them because there are new things in the world enabled by IT. So what I'm suggesting to you is it's important that hospitals be wired. It's important that doctors will be wired. We will, know we will need them for the foreseeable future. But it's also important that our public policy consider scope of practice laws, corporate practice of medicine laws, the entire range of regulations that constrict the development of new things in healthcare, always waving the bloody flag of patient safety. Because if the promise of IT is to help make things cheaper and more responsive and more accessible to people, then as in other industries, we've got to allow for the development of new services, new organizations, new platforms whose configuration we can only vaguely imagine right now. So those are the three public policy things that we've got to get right to get IT right. We've got to get reimbursement right. We've got to get um, comparative effectiveness right. And we've got to get regulation right. And the last company I mentioned was OpenTable. OpenTable is an interesting example. Anybody here ever use OpenTable? So OpenTable has bought, brought Kaiserness to non-Kaiser docs. It's allowed you to get the capacity, the sophistication of a Ruth's Chris or a, I don't know, an Olive Garden as an independent restaurant. So part of what we need in IT, for those of you who are here for the land rush, I know you're here. I know you're here. It's the land rush and the gold rush and the GI Bill all rolled into one. Because I'm sure Epic's in the house and eClinical Works is in the house and Cerner's in the house and NextGen's in the house. Y'all are here. Someone is going to be able to bring to smaller practices the capacity that they need to be interwoven with the rest of the world without necessarily joining the Permanente Medical Group. There's a model in Open Table about how to do that. So my plea to you is to think not just about the public policy of IT, which Lord knows is important, but to also think about the other related public policy areas that are necessary to get right if IT is to fulfill its promise. Thank you. That was a sermon from the Reverend Dr. Mark Smith. <laughs> Let us all say amen. 